Go for what's up there. Uh, it says we recommend mm -hmm. that l corporal lamb in camera, lance mm -hmm. corporal Njai, private lamb in camera, private Paul Mendy, and private Aliu Kambi mm -hmm. of second battalion Farafenye be prosecuted for the deaths and injuries suffered by victims at Bir mm -hmm. And you know what your government did? Indemnity. Exactly, precisely. This so there was nowhere. No time in which you sent an order no, no, it was there. It was asking there. for the demotion it was of there. Jai. We acted. Okay. Uh, Outside the commission. The second, the second recommendation that yes. affected your men is the two groups of soldiers from Basse and Kudang under the command of Lieutenant Samba Balde and Lieutenant Wasakamara respectively should also face disciplinary action for the inhumane treatment of citizens at Birkamaba. Mm. Even this one, mm -hmm. the indemnity, mm -hmm. deals with state actions. But even this one, this minor disciplinary action within the army, you did not do. True or false? True. You did nothing, absolutely. In the first place, why punish one and leave the other? So when the indemnity came, we said, ah, this is just clear everybody. When you told the commission, <laughs> Mm -hmm. that you wrote a letter to the commanding officer asking for the demotion of Njai that was No, 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 I, I did not write to the commission. To the commanding officer? Before the commission. Two, there was also misappropriation of ammunition. Did you write to the commanding officer asking mm -hmm. for the demotion of Njai? One Njai. Yes. With, no, as I think if my memory serves me, now it's almost 19 years, but something must have, have taken place. Because even the commanding officer himself suggested that the one who misappropriated those arms and ammunition must be handled. But it is that same commanding officer who said that the ammunition was intact. It was not intact. So, so, so the thing is, Njai testified before the commission, yes, and uh, he said he was never called mm -hmm. to ask to be asked any question. He was never asked anything at all. The first time he ever talked about having been involved in the killing of the civilians mm -hmm. was in that very chair you are sitting. When he came here? Yes. Does okay. that surprise you? It does surprise me. Well, how, why are you surprised when the whole army was involved in a cover-up? Well, let's call it a cover-up, for sure. So this so-called recommendation to have him demoted mm -hmm. is also another lie before I would, have, I would have punished him twice. I said, I think. You know, I've not read this oh, document. So since. you're just telling us what yeah, you yeah, think. Yeah. I, that's why not I, what I you said, know. I wish if I had read this, I would have adjusted myself. Okay. And that is why I mm -hmm. told you your yeah, approach yeah. is dangerous. Mm -hmm. Stick to the truth mm -hmm. and not calibrate your answers on the basis of what you think we have. Okay. That is dangerous because it means you are prepared to tell a story to align with what we have mm -hmm. instead of the truth. Okay. So if I had a document showing that you knew that 35 people died, you would probably say yes. Okay. So speak the truth. It the is, truth is only coming. the truth. But the only worry, my only concern is if I had read that document, that would have given me additional impetus to stand properly. I would have said, I didn't do anything. Mr. Jata, just no, Let's just accept truth. that. Is it, is it a crime to show me the document in the first place? No, I ask. am showing you the document. No, no, I mean at the investigation site. Look, I, I, it was Because we, 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 we discussed this with the investigator on that operation orders. They reminded me of what happened. I said, no. My own deputy, Colonel Baji, who is the present National Security Advisor, wrote that on my behalf. It was like he said he did not write, I said he wrote. And I was even telling them to say, ask him what was he doing over the period. He let wrote, now he he wrote. Let us not go to irrelevant No, no, issues. some things are coming. If I had seen that earlier on, would it have been very good to me? Now, not until I saw this that I have countersigned it. So, pardon, I take the responsibility for whatever goes wrong in that document. I was the commander. They are working for me. 
So my point about that document is that what you have told us mm -hmm. of what the facts were mm -hmm. as at the time the document was being written mm -hmm. and what is contained in the document is false. So for sure, I told you, I expressed to the investigators earlier on about my finding from the onset. Okay. Uh, can you tell us, Mr. Jata, why was it that your office acted in the way it did? Why did you generate false documents? In the first place. Yes. When it was mentioned that this is going to the Commission of Inquiry, hands down. To me, initially I thought maybe the Commission would not believe me. But I thought I can block that document and tell Kato, look, no, let's go over procedures. But it did not happen. And I sought the advice of the CJ. He said, we are going to investigate on our own. I said, we will be available when we need us. Because we can give you some information on the arms, ammunition, and also the state of the personnel. He said yes. It never happened. I went to the commission 30 minutes, I was told to go home. Go back, we'll call you. Up till today. We did not go into the nitty gritty of matters when I was told to leave. Because there was a quarrel between. Uh, but, let me explain. That is not let helping us, me. Mr. Jata. Yes, I was uh, telling you. Uh, look, if we that had does gone not. The commission, let, maybe there would be out. some explanation. Just hear me out. Uh, whether there was an altercation or disagreement mm -hmm. between Bindonga mm -hmm. and the Justice Latte does not explain why you delivered a false document to the Commission of Enquiry. I would have blocked that. I was told to submit it. Okay, Mr. Jata, the com who told you to submit it? CJ. He told you to submit a false document? No, he did not read it. I said, I have a document here which I'm not very happy with. He said, look, we are going to conduct my away. Whatever the case may be, bring it. Now, going to put pressure uh, on the Mr. officer to tell him Mr. that, Jata, change I your document. I will not do that. Okay, I will, we would move on. Mm -hmm. uh, you have talked about this document. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, you unwillingly submitted a false document. That's what you want us to believe. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, the commission would make its own findings on Please. that. Okay, okay. Uh, so what I, just on the issue of April 10th and 11th, okay. you have agreed that the evidence shows that your men were deployed in the morning mm -hmm. at Westfield. They participated in killing, in shootings. You have also agreed that you were ordered by the vice president to deploy your men to go and quell the student demonstration. You indicate yes. Yes, and yes, or yes, no. yes, yes. Uh, please don't indicate by shaking heads. Okay. Just answer the, okay. to the, to the right, proposition. Right. Yeah. You also have accepted that your men participated in arrest and torture of students. Yes. You accept that your men participated in uh, the killings of people, uh, civilians in Birkamaba area? For sure. Arrest and tortures in Janjambure and Base? Yes, please. You have also accepted that uh, you generated false documents? Mm -hmm. Answer yes or no. Yes or no. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Confusion. <laughs> uh, you have also accepted uh, that the document that was submitted to the Commission of Enquiry reporting the activities of the army was patently false. Yes, please. Good. So now you have also failed in your responsibilities as commander of the army to deal with the men mm -hmm. that participated in the events of April 11th at Birkamaba area. Okay, yes. You failed. You yes, I failed. Good. So now I would put aside 10 April and move on to another topic. Okay.
Thank you. Now, let's talk about the death of Usman Korosise. We don't have much time. All what right. you have to say about that is a bit limited. Tell us what you know. Let me see. I have the dates here. Let's assume that you feed me with the date. I don't want to open up the file so fast. Just, you can it open whatever on a particular, document you want. On a particular day when we got to learn about an incident around Jambur area. And that this involved a Mercedes Benz being issued to ministers. Then How did you get that information? I got it from the DGNI. What was his name? Sambaba. Late Sambaba. He told me to say, let's go there. I said, okay, I'll follow. But he was there. I forgot to mention one name. Katimbaji was also there at the scene. Okay, proceed. So we went to the scene. They arrived before me and waited for me. And he, when I came, I said, okay, now I'm going to give you an assignment. Go around and assess what happened to the vehicle and come. So I went around, starting from the road there. It was muddy in the rains, maybe early rains or so. We would underline that it was muddy. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. There were pockets of water, right? Yes, yes, yes. It looks as the vehicle went like that, down into a drain by the culvert. So the first thing I observed was, I believe in the rain, if the vehicle has, the front wheel has a turn, there must be some little form of splash. Could you say that again? Uh, some little form of? If the vehicle was running at a particular speed, no matter what, if you have to bend at that joint, that the wheel must throw some mud, muddy water, uh, mud, muddy sand mud, mud. plus. So as a oh, mud. splash, yeah, plus, of, yes. of mud, yeah. Yes, I looked at the plus, it didn't go long distance. But then I said, could it be at top speed or normal speed? I went down. I, you have lost me. I cannot see the connection between the speed and the splash. Yeah, yeah, uh, maybe so that one, yes. No, but explain yourself better. Yes, I observed that one. The splash was you not... you observe? The splash was not far away from the wheels. So you suggest, and what would that imply to you? It implies that it could be he was driving at a very low speed, whatever the case may be. So the vehicle would not have been speeding? Yes. All right, proceed. Down the gully, by the culvert, on the side of the culvert, Impact. The first impact, we have some stains of paint. But where it's stopped, we have dents on that side. How big was the dent? The dent was not that much, you as compared to real accident. So are you suggesting that this was not a real accident? No, uh, uh, traffic accident. Was it a real accident in your view, or was it not? To me, to my point of view, it was not a real accident. So you want to tell us I that... I expect the dents to be bigger than that. Okay, okay proceed, please. I went to the mod, uh, front, front of the vehicle, you know, the front mode guard. It was a little bit in. We expect, I expect that if it driver has turned at speed, maybe the front bumper would have been deep inside, deeper. Then on top of the roof, they, it was some dense also. Then I said, I don't think a minister will hold on to a dented vehicle without repairing it. Hey, whoever had this vehicle would drive this vehicle without observing this dents. Okay, so from what you say, Yes. Do you think those dents could have been obtained to a vehicle having somersault? No, no, no. If it had to somersault, then maybe we would have seen a skating. So there was no somersault? I don't know why it happened. Okay, I don't know what happened. Okay. So it was like something is wrong because we saw the charred body in the vehicles. No limp, no legs. A little bit of the intestine came out. But I can't remember whether the head was there or not. But the limbs were not there. And the vehicle was uh, 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 set on fire. So that small accident... Set on fire? That is what down. you say? Yes, yes, set on That's fire. A, that sounds like a deliberate activity. Yeah, so... 
Are you really sure that? But how could you say that? How could you say the vehicle was set on fire? It was set on fire, and this guy, the, 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 the deceased, was inside. I believe if that was a heavy impact, it could have caused that. The impact itself. I felt maybe this was too light for this man to, to be unable to From get out of the vehicle. From everything that you have seen, yes. What was your conclusion about that so-called accident? Alma Momane was making noise that this was sabotage. I am not asking you about what Alma Mo said. I knew that it was also sabotage. What kind of sabotage? What was that man finding there at that time of the day, morning? You tell me. You are I here to know. answer questions. Yeah, yeah, I need to go, yes. So when we investigated towards the end, we discovered that it was Corosilla through the uh, Coro who? operative. Corosis, okay. not Corosilla. Oh. Through the interoperative. They called somebody on the ground to tell them that this was Corosis. So I took the phone. I had my kind of Germano. Those ones been tested earlier on with Gamtel. And I called Edward. Edward who? Singate, then the acting chairman of the AFPRC. And uh, I reported the situation to him. I said, Tell us what you said to him. I said, Well, we have found a vehicle here. Now it is confirmed that it belonged to Coro, a Mercedes Benz. But then the color, you can't see the color. What time of the day was this? This was around between 8 or 9. It was in the morning, in the morning. And this was the day after the vehicle got missing or Coro got missing? I don't know when it went missing, but you know, this was information going around. What? How soon after that mm -hmm. uh, did the uh, Jame travel out of the country? He went to Cuba or where? He was not in the country. Yes. But yes was it the day after or few days after or weeks did after? That night he traveled, daybreak, this happened. So very Because early. I was with Koro at the airport. So it was the next day that you saw the vehicle? Okay, you know, after the night, we call it that night, but it's the, the following morning. Yes. Yes. I was with, we were at Koro so at the airport. Would you say that your group was the first line of government officials to be there, to go to the scene? No, no, I don't think so. What I'm, the question is, mm -hmm. were you the first government <laughs> officials to go and visit the scene officially? I don't think so. All right. We were not the first group. Okay. But you so, were there around yes, 8 yes. or 9? Yes. In the morning? In the morning. All mm -hmm. right. So, or at this stage, mm -hmm. do you know whether at this stage Mr. Edward Singate was informed about the existence of that Mercedes Benz at Jambur? He could be informed by other means, but I also felt as this. Chief of Staff and the head of the military, we, I, I was with the DGNIA, okay. it is our duty to inform him. Precisely. But yes. do you know whether the DGNIA had already informed him? I don't know. Uh, when you were there with the DGNIA, uh, did he say anything about informing Mr. Singati? No, no, he did not tell me. Are you sure about that? We were standing there when I, I made the call. Did he suggest that you make the call? No, I decided to make the call. I said, let's call the vice president, chairman. What did he say? He said, okay, go ahead. Did he tell you that he had already called him? He did not tell me. All right. So as far as you knew at that time, Singhati was not informed by the DG? It could be he knew, but I have to inform him, but not the DG. Listen to the question. Okay. The question is, mm -hmm. when you told Mr. Sambaba that you are going to call Mr. Singate to inform him, mm -hmm. what belief did you have? Did you that believe mm -hmm. that Singate was already informed by Sambaba, or did you believe that he was not informed by Sambaba? No, no. I believed he was not informed. If he told me that he has informed the uh, uh, then vice chairperson, there was no need for me to call. So when you were informing the vice chair, you believed that at least from that group, you yes. were the one reporting to him yes, yes. for the first time what for had happened. For the first happened. time, yes. I should ask so things. tell us about the conversation. I told him about what we found on the ground, mm -hmm. as I had just reported to you. 
Because tell us what you told yes. him. I told him that while we are at this site, but we have observed something here. We observe this plus of the mud. Uh, I want you to tell us yes. what you said to him. Exactly. Exactly. Precisely. Yes. Yes. As far as you can recall. Yes. Okay. Don't summarize things. Tell us ah, okay. what you told him. Yes. I told him that we are at the site. You, you see, is, you are is, still is not answering site. the question. We are at the site of the accident, incident. You cannot just call somebody. Hello, oh, Deputy okay, Chair. Okay. We are at the site of the compliments, incident. Compliments, compliments. Yes. Tell us what you told him. I did oddly received the phone. Yes. Which oddly? Marong. What was his first name? Uh, I don't know. But he is, is an oddly or... Okay, proceed. Yes, yes. Would he it handed, be Lamin Marong? He handed he said, an oddly to Edward. Would it be Lamin Marong? Sort of soldier. Would it be somebody who was called King Kong? <sighs> Somewhere at the bottom, we okay, don't know Okay, proceed, names. please. So he handed over the phone to Edward after the compliments. Good morning, sir. I informed him that we are at the site of this. That's an incident here that has happened. Which site? Did you mention the at place? At Jambur, Jambur. Around Jambur. We said there's a vehicle here, presumably a Mercedes Benz, which has um, been engulfed in an accident or so. I told him that the vehicle has been burnt, the driver has been charred, no limbs, nothing. There was some dense. The splash here was not much, and we assumed it could be some form of accident here. He said, what was the guy doing there? I said, do I know? He said, okay, let's wait until the president comes. Listen carefully. Yes. Listen carefully. Okay. Did, at this stage, did you tell him mm -hmm. who you believed that person to be? Yes. Yes, 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 yes. When we got the the information, I said we believe that this could be coro. But initially, I told him that initially we don't know. But now it's confirmed that this is a minister. I don't understand. I am lost. You are on the phone with him. Yes. You told him. You said initially you did not know. I who don't mean he was. initially to him. Pardon? I said here is an accident. But then we are trying to, the, 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 we are, the, the security are trying to, and I are trying to find out who this person was. But before we left here, before we call you, it was confirmed that it was Koro. Koro who? Sise. Did you say what Koro's position was? Finance minister, then finance Did you minister. tell him that? I told him Koro Sise. Yes, we know Koro as finance minister. Those pencils were issued to finance to ministers. What did he say to you? He said, okay. Let's wait until the president comes. That is exactly what he told you. That's what I could remember. And the chairman comes. Did he appear surprised? No, I don't. Sorry, it could be. Because I was not seeing him. That's why I asked. Maybe through his reaction. On his did, did he sound mm -hmm. surprised by the information you gave him? Yeah, yeah. Initially he said, yeah. Something like that. And apart from here, what else did he say? He said, okay, let's see. When the chairman comes, we'll see what we can do. And that's all? That's all. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, let me go ahead. Go ahead. In fact, it happened that on a night before, the president was traveling. Could it be in the morning or, let's say, before midnight? Or I think it was after midnight. I don't know. The president was traveling outside this country. I don't know what I've written. So we stood there. You know, he has been very nice to us. On that day, Saftu Job, the press officer at the State House was by my side. Koro was in between us. Sorry, he was on the other side. Koro was in between us. And it was the day he informed me that I'm going to raise your maintenance vote from 4 million, sorry, 400,000 to 1.5 million. And we joke over it. And he told me what's going to be my rank. I tell my Jifu general. So he took my pickup. It was drizzling, and I said, "Okay, you put on it." And I, I stood without a headdress. But before then, I used to go to his office. 
The first thing he was telling me, let us revamp that Army Engineering Corps. Uh, Mr. Jata, we, we want to talk about things that are relevant to okay, his death. Okay, okay, fine. So when this happened, we got this a little bit devastated. We left, then I think communications were... Did you sense any problem between Koro and members of the government at the time? At that level, no. I didn't sense anything. All you know mm -hmm. regarding Koro's death yeah. is you went to the scene and this is what you found and you reported to... From a layman's point of view. Uh, yes, but from a military commander's point, point of, view. of view. Okay, fine, that's right. And then you reported to your them. findings to the to the acting chairman. Yes, of the AFPRC. Of the AFPRC. Mm -hmm. And he said you should wait until Yaya Jame returned. Yes. Correct? Yes. All right. So by that, mm -hmm. you expected that the vehicle and the body and the remains would all be left there until Yaya Jame returned. I don't know where the communication was got to, but finally the vehicle was removed, as I had from but, the IG. But, but from your conversation, mm -hmm. that is what it implied, correct? Yes, yes. Okay, good. So now let's leave the issue of Korosise. Okay. Now let's come to the issue of the junglers. Yes. The junglers were created mm -hmm. whilst you were still CDS, correct? Fires. Yes. In fact, your brother was one of the first junglers, correct? Mm -hmm. uh, and what's his name? Alec Jata. And he, in fact, has confirmed, participated in several jungler activities. And during your time, yes. he participated in the several killings mm -hmm. uh, among, uh, by the junglers, mm -hmm. correct? Okay, yes. So, while he was a jungler, he wasn't going to walk like other soldiers, correct? Mm -hmm. And you were CDS. Mm -hmm. Did you do anything about it? I didn't do anything about it, but I believe he was under command. What command? He belongs to a unit. That's the state guard. If in the early morning muster parade, an officer is found not being present, I believe the unit should do something about that. Who should do something about the it? The unit commander at the state house. But if the unit commander does not, shouldn't the superior officers do something about it? I have been asking for now and then. I do ask him. Ah, are you not at work today? He said no. But you know, so most cases, when I was but serious, Babuka, I, I do go only on weekends home. But Babuka, you knew he was not going to work. For sure. You knew that that was wrong. It was wrong. You knew that for any other officer, mm -hmm. That person would have been charged mm -hmm. with a wall. Absolutely. Without, and beyond that, desertion. Exactly. Mm -hmm. the, and desertion is a very serious offense in the military. Yes. Yet you did not do anything about it. I for one. He, the unit should be take that responsibility. And I was talking to Bajinka. That was uh, the time I used to talk to Bajinka. Bawker. Uh, the unit commander failed to do something about it. Mm -hmm. And you knew that the unit commander did not do anything about it. Mm -hmm. Did you, as commander of the force, do anything, do anything about it? All I can do is I said, I didn't find out. But at that point in time, that if that was the problem, I really don't know. That was a problem, I really don't know. But, but, but you are the army commander. I am you had commander. command and control responsibility over this and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and Yes, I do know. But it's not my duty to go down to the bottom level and start questioning about private We service. know it was not I can your only duty. question okay. this commanding officer. Bab Sorry, o OC. Babukar. Yes. Military law is, command responsibility is, is very, very simple. Okay. All right? All right. You, you knew mm -hmm. that this soldier of yours was not going to work, okay. correct? Yes. You knew that these were disciplinary offenses in the army. Mm -hmm. You knew it amounted to a wall or desertion. at most desertion. Yes. You knew these were offenses. Okay. 
you did not do anything about it. Yes. You knew that his superior officers, who happened to be your subordinates, did not do anything about it. Mm -hmm. The army kept a blind eye mm -hmm. at what was happening. Yes. Correct? Yes. It was a deliberate effort on your part not to say anything. You all decided to stay mum. For sure. And that was all part of your blind loyalty to Yaya Jame. Yes. You knew this was a hit squad doing Yaya Jame's job, but none of you would lift a finger and say anything about it. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. I have no further questions for Mr. Jata. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, my counsel, and uh, thank you very much, Mr. Jata, for coming to testify before the commission. Thank you. Before I turn to the commissioners, if they have any questions to ask you, uh, okay. just want to ascertain from you that your testimony yesterday and today, would it be fair to say the revelations that came out of that really have uh, been accurately summarized by counsel um, and uh, what's your perspective on that one that summary was lies lies and lies and a massive cover-up by almost everybody who was involved cover on the uh, investigation the handling of the april 2000 uh, event would you agree with that, that that's an accurate yes. summary I mean, I of all of you. Lies, lies, and a massive cover-up by everyone. Yes, please. Yes, I do agree. I do agree. Tragic. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Kinte, you have a floor. Um, Babukar. Yes. My question is, uh, I remember Jai admitted firing 104 bullets at least that one has been accounted for but he also alleged that others also fired bullets live bullets and yes uh, the indicators uh, by your um, statement in the commission you said it is mentioned that all the five of them should fall, face some form of punishment meaning the other four are also culprits regarding the firing of live rounds. Okay. Have you been able to establish an inventory of the total um, rounds that were fired by the other four so that we can add up to the and establish the total amount of uh, live rounds that were fired at Brikama Bar? I, I for now, by now, I can't, I may not be able to recall what action was taken. But we know that after every action, you know to recount, counter check what you have and what has been expended. And we expect that report to come. So when I saw in the report that he said everything was intact, that has, that's not possible. He said no. So now. Could you kindly speak into the microphone? So now, at this commission of inquiry, now it has proven that even more was expended than what was said. The accountability of ammunition was not perfectly done. Okay. My second question is about Koroshise. Yes. You told us uh, you are in saw whether the head was there or not. Yes. But you told us the limbs were in there. They were not there. I, uh, about the limbs, were you only referring to the hands or even the legs? Even the legs. Were in there. Were in there. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much, uh, Commissioner Carr. You have the floor. Thank you. My question is just a little clarification. In your testimony yesterday, you um, recounted that while you were moving around Africa, there was a student leader whose name um, named Musa An. No, not a student leader. He, he is a, uh, an employee of Central Bank. Oh, okay. All right. Yes. Because from witness t uh, t testimonies, the name we had was Omar An and not Musa An. So no, I, I know Musa An in passing. Oh, so it's different? Yes, he's a brother to Pamodu An, Major An. Okay, thank you. Yes, yes. Uh, thank you. Um, uh, Imam Jalo, you have the floor, please. Witness, 
you said that um, <clears throat> whoever gave the order f to shoot mm -hmm. must be above you and not yes. below you. Can you list out for this commission the people who are above you? It, above me could be the, the minister, the vice president above me, the president is above me, but under me, I have the rest of the troops. The, uh, my deputy was there, the present, present security advisors, my commanding officers were there. If they had given the, this the suit, they have done it on their own accord, and they know that's a court martial offense. Because we have reached a stage. If we have to go through the normal process, I should be fired. Likewise, how the DG was fired, how the IEP was fired. But along the line, they spared me. Uh, th thank you very much, um, uh, Mr. Jata. If you have any concluding remarks, can you proceed? Um, uh, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, for giving me the floor. That's an Englishman. The Englishman, the Englishman says, "If you want to see your sport, come under the spotlight." And this is what really happened. We were very worried, well before the commission. And if I tell you that I was happy with the if in that report, I thought we did not contribute much to the last commission. So it has opened up a gap. And for these circumstances, it is we, the commander, who will always fall victim when issues are around us were not made clear. May I also reiterate that during the Second Republic, was marred by civil disobedience. Imagine a coup d'etat who overtaking a government and a constitutionally recognized government was overthrown by the barrel of the gun. So we didn't expect things easy on a silver platter. With time, we get to realize that we are going for the wash. We do know. Because events started popping up like that. Solution, we don't know. We were not even prepared for this coup. <coughs> and even during the coup, so many processes were made only to discover that they couldn't be fulfilled. So problems all over, all over. In the first place, what aggravated the whole thing was that rewarding soldiers by rank. We are all couples. We got up early morning, I'm a lieutenant, you are a couple. You still remain as a couple. How would you work? That esprit de corps was not there. So we are faced with a problem. 21 days over, when I was finally appointed, we saw this problem. But I advised them that you cannot reward a soldier by rank. If you want to do so, buy something and give it to him in appreciation. But then here is a situation, a coup. We are opening up ourselves to other coup d'etats. Four months later, a stroke. I insist that to kill those students was the wrong way. The military has its own way. Arrest them, take them to a court martial. If they are found guilty, go to the Supreme Court. Because at our court martial, we have a justice, a judge from the CJ's office, a civilian judge. And our national DPP, will start, uh, sit for the state. It will go back to the Supreme Court for analysis. If they confirm that, yes, they are guilty, the same court will tell us how we go to execute these people. Not by saying guilty and you go ahead. No, they will tell you whether you're going to uh, inject them by lethal injection, shoot them by firing squad, or hang them. They will tell you. And once that is confirmed, a day before that, the Attorney General must read the verdict to the victim. There must be an imam, there must be a pastor to help them read. In the American system, they said, give them their last meal. Even if you have to execute them, their relatives will pick up their bodies at the mortuary. But what happened has triggered serious instability among ourselves. We know that could it have some, some characteristics. One. Precipitary retirements will always come. 
uh, uh, banning of the constitution and having decrees, ruling by decrees, while no people, nobody's been consulted. We know about suspicion. We know about a lot of killing. <laughs> Even financial transactions are always never straight. We know about this. So this is the environment we found ourselves in. The rule of thumb is we are all answerable to one man. That's the president. But I used to tell people, the president is our president, you and me, I. He is our chief executive, you and I. But he is our commander-in-chief, not your commander-in-chief. So this is the situation. And the army is always married to the commander-in-chief. When I say married, answerable to only one person. The Minister of Defense is just a lesson officer, I would say. In operational matters, we face the commanders-in-chief ourselves. So over the period, we have seen instances that brought about even the growth of this so-called junglers and so on. This was in 2003. I left in 2004. The death of uh, uh, this journalist, uh, how do you call it? Point newspaper journalist, uh, Deda Hydra. Why then we were not in the government? But we have decided to take one path with my former deputy, Sam Sidin Sar. We are going to stick to this man and advise him as much as we could, keep him on the right path. There were so many things we did for people, we don't want to mention it. You see, if you know your boss, you know how to handle him. But we know, Jaime also has his own problem too. Maybe he's not even communicating it to people. And he thought aggression would solve the problem. Anytime you move aggressively towards your people, you're creating a lot of problems. I decided not to have any affairs with civilians. Why? In the Farafanya attack, the civilians arrested this boss and handed them over to me. So we operated as a team. In the Katong attack, some said sir, my deputy went to Yundum barracks and he said, go on this July 22nd ceremony. I am taking over, but I'm going to sit in Yundum. And he came to say, Informations were coming from the civilians. Now, if the civilians see us slaughtering these people, tomorrow would they defend us? They will not. We know all about psychological warfare. We were in North Carolina and so on. We know what we, it really meant. But then at the bottom of the ladder, awareness, sensitization, or professionalism was not there. When you advise a head of state, he takes it or he said no. That's left to him. But the repercussion will always surface. And you are made to be accountable. Imagine 17 years they were telling me that you shot these students and you are telling them that, hey, fire, fire, fire. But today, it was all clear. Even if my men has to suit, I take the responsibility, but I was not alone. April 10 has caused big divisions among we the security. That same morning, I was not talking to the DG for what he did. And I said, I was trying to cover up the IG. We've been working hands and gloves with the police. We want to learn from the police. We even want them to learn from us. But when I send some officers to them from the police to come and learn the way the army operates, three days later they all quit except one man, Musa Mbub. Thank God when the incident in Farafanya happened, Musa was the commissioner at Kerewan. Come and see what he did for us. We were so pleased. But when it came to decorate him in appreciation, they said no. So all this keep on things, things are never arranged in the, uh, as we may expect. We face that. Our families were running into problems. I don't see my kids sometimes 21 days. I have to sit at home on a Sunday to see my kids. This affected us. 10 years I have never gone on leave. Mr. Chairman, I said today, if there were to be another coup, count me out. Two. Even we thought that our lives is going to improve, they did improve. Well, only a few people whose lives were improved. This is a lesson for us. A professor soldier those things got involved in coup d'etat. But when they coup d'etat, you see professional officers trying to stabilize the situation. And as we, as we said, we did all that we can do to stabilize the situation. But our problem sometimes got to be the state house. Let me be honest with you. They will not go on course. When it comes to rotation, as the council said, 
I told them that you have to rotate these soldiers in between them. I can rotate my brother and others. But why should I take my brother out and leave others there when we sense that there's problems? You see, if we maintain that rotation pattern, there wouldn't have been much problem. But how can one man stay in the state house for the rest of his career? That's a problem. And the CDS cannot do anything about it. And when the president mocked us, you say, okay, Ranka Dedi. Well done. You are fired, you will not know why you are fired. You will not know what you have done wrong. Is that not insecurity? So please, please live peacefully within the Gambia. This is, a, this is a very small country. And if you think you can touch civilians who are making the worst mistake, a man stood in front of my vehicle telling me that, I don't know what to do with him. I gave him $200. He accepted giving away. Was well, that not a wise thing? But if I have to follow my instincts, I'm going to beat that man. We have seen incidents when officers themselves shot civilians. I will call and say, this guy is dying. Come and see him. He'll take his last breath. The man will never do it again. We will rush him to the hospital and make sure that Jeff got him. But on the other hand, we are able to maintain a good PR with the, with, with the civilians too. They are our authority. They are our civility. Despite all the people you see on our soldier up to here, you cannot pass the permanent secretary. Uh, Mr. Jata, you can start summarizing. Yes, fine. This is a moment for me. Give me, please, chance. You see, that was why we said we have to involve, involve the army in civil military relationship. Look at the RVH. The children's ward. We did everything for them. Patching the road from Banjulindin to Kafuta. We did everything. I went to Libya and came with the tar. This was all based on what we were talking with Koro. But God said it will not happen. But we are also being stigmatized. Imagine from prehistory, the military. We've never had good names. Our reputations are so bad. But now, I am telling, pay attention to them. If you have a, a child in a family and you disregard him, he would be a troublemaker. We thought that when the, 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 the July 22nd comes, we are going to enjoy. <laughs> and if we did not enjoy, we had the worst. Mr. Chairman, on a final note, on behalf of the entire armed forces, I want to apologize to each and everyone. In fact, I have one of the patients here. Uh, if I would, hey, cancel, please. You see, he has forgotten me. <laughs> There's a guy here who is a victim. Please bring him. Let me say sorry on behalf of all that who are victims. Please, can now you do talk, that? There are more victims out there waiting. Yes, yes, so talk yes. to them. Please. Talk to all of them. Yes, I am very, very sorry. I'm very touched. But on the other hand, I want to say thank you very much, the Commission. If it were not you, I will leave with this. Hmm? I did not come to myself. They did not, did not call me. I said that in the Fat Network that I will appear in the commission because I know that this commission cannot avoid me. If the truth has to be exposed. When Damfa came to me, he talked to me so nice and he said, well, we had this, you say, you will be prepared to come to the commission. I said, I'm very willing. But if you think that this commission is a joke because you are never affected, you are never in that ditch shit like, sorry, like how I am today, sorry for that. But today, it's all coming out. At the end of the day, the soldiers are hearing all this. For the council, lead. You see, I wanted one thing, you do one thing for us. You see, if you handle a soldier well, at the end of the day, you tell him that under this section, you have caused this offense. I want them, you tell the murder, what section those murder belongs to. That will run and they will keep in their pockets. Those in the barracks will know what's going on. And that will deter them from any other thing. Do you know what happened when this Farafanya attack came? I told Vincent Jata, stand by, you are going to go. Hey, sir, you cannot make me get up this early morning. Next morning they said it's a coup. So we have our own problems too. Until Peter has to say, look, I am going to do it good or bad. I say, I trust you. And we stood by the people, involved the people, civilians. We play football in Farafanya. And now here's a situation where people who are talking, sometimes when the former vice president come, we cut out of things, out of him, we had a good time. We do, give him a good card of honor at the, at the terminal. And he calls by our names. The relationship now is all gone. Mr. Chairman, thank you very much for putting me here today. I may be very serious what happened. 
But this is the moment I have to tell the whole world. I have to tell you, those armed forces, be careful. I have gone through one mistake. Don't let it be repeated. I should always say, never again. On the last note, I wish to thank you very much for giving me the audience. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, um, uh, Mr. Jatta, uh, for those remarks and also for coming to testify before the commission. Um, we will uh, uh, take a break and come back at um, uh, 2.30. Um, Council, is that uh, okay? Or what uh, I, do you have may, may, plans on may, that? Maybe uh, five past two. Uh -huh. I beg your pardon, sorry? Five past two. Uh, it, prayers should be two o'clock. Or, or a little before two. So, because if we do not start that time, uh, we may not be able to finish today. We so probably would finish late. We we'll resume at um, uh, uh, two or two or five. Two or five. Yeah. Fine. If you take a break now, let's resume at two or five. You can go um, uh, <laughs> pray and pray, pray for everybody. <laughs> yes. Thank, Thank you. you, Mr. Chair. Meeting is adjourned.